Yo, you know what's funny? A little lore into the greater, I suppose. I never really thought about it until doing the research for this video, but I am and pretty much have always been a one-trick pony when it comes to my video game lifestyle. <laughs> now relax, before you click off or slander me into the Shadow Realm in the comment section for being a simpleton, in what is probably the most cliche origin story you can get for a young greater, it started off with Super Smash Bros. all the way to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, to the glory days of FIFA Beer Cups and 2K Tequila Finals, and now, I pretty much have matching brain aneurysms with the homies either sweating it out in Apex Legends or MLB The Show. You could pretty much ballpark my age there, no pun intended, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who can relate to my origin story in the comments. I'm a relatable character, something that you would more than likely say is one of the most important aspects when it comes to storytelling. My point is, when you live the life of the one trick, you miss out on countless amounts of incredible video games throughout the years, and I mean, an actual ridiculous amount of them. It's crazy because I missed out on stuff like the God of War franchise, Elden Ring, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Red Dead Redemption, Spider-Man, Final Fantasy, The Witcher franchise, Uncharted, The Last of Us, those Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order games, and those are all just titles that I was able to list off the top of my head without doing any research just because those are some of the games that my friends have played while me and my trio have continued to live the life of simpletons. I see the errors in my ways. With that being said though, that means the majority of video game adaptations that Hollywood attempts to adapt, which is becoming more and more frequent in the era of no creativity we're living through now. Of course you have your big budget hitters that appeal to the casual masses, myself included, like Super Mario, the Sonic universe, which I still haven't seen yet, so I'm probably not going to watch that Knuckles show, and even the Mortal Kombat movie back in 2021. But when it comes to the adaptations that were picked up for our small screens in the comfort of our own home like The Last of Us or Arcane, it's safe to say that I was going in relatively blind to the narrative, the lore, the characters, the structure, the stakes, the world building. I was a normie, a POV that I don't really watch too many shows or movies through and honestly, is a breath of fresh air every time I get the chance. Which leads us to Fallout, Amazon's newest attempt to deliver its patrons with yet another well-crafted adaptation that fans and casuals alike can talk about and champion for, adding to shows like The Boys and its universe with Gen V, Invincible, That Reacher Show, and The Rings of Power. <laughs> Okay, maybe not that last one, but when it comes to Fallout 2024, not to be confused with a fake video game title, it was surprisingly fun, charming, and intriguing throughout the entirety of its runtime. Backed by a writing team that was practically showing off with the amount of digestible and relatable characters they were able to flesh out, and had an engaging enough of a world to keep a simpleton such as myself immersed and looking forward as the show took its time to answer the questions I was looking for. And while yes, this is a show that has been out for quite a while. Listen, I was doing other things. Damn you, Zach. Anyway, let's talk about... Okay, so the story itself takes place in your classic post-apocalyptic setting after the humans of the time finally decided to wipe each other out with nuclear warfare. Fucking blokes. I don't know how scientifically accurate this is, but 200 years later in a world now separated between the uncultured and uncivilized world of the surface dwellers that somehow managed their way to survive. And the vault dwellers, generations of puppy-like people hidden deep underneath the ground stemming from the people that could afford them before the OG blast, and planned to keep the American dream well and preserved in order to start anew once the time was right. You pick up and continue to watch a three-way narrative of characters all heading to one particular destination to deliver the head of a research doctor who has the key to everything embedded into his net aka unlimited energy supply to a world where energy has pretty much been wiped off the face of the map. You have Lucy, a naive and happy-go-lucky vault dweller whose life is turned upside down when her vault is attacked by surface dwellers. Leading to the capture of her father and future chaos of her vault, Lucy is now motivated to go to the surface in order to rescue her father and now seeks to trade the doctor's head in exchange for him. And then you have Maximus, a member of the Brotherhood of Steel who, honestly, I couldn't really figure out if he is a good person or not, but due to his own choices, finds himself in a situation where he is in way over his head, 
and after the death of his giant mech master Titus, is forced to deliver the head of the Doctor to the Brotherhood of Steel in order to save his own ass. And of course you have the ghoul, the most fleshed out and honestly still the most mysterious character of the bunch as an ex-Hollywood actor who became an immortal zombie-like bounty hunter after the OG Blast, who also acts like our flashback character for the audience in order to flesh out the narrative overall. Together, the three characters are kind of the perfect trio of characters to follow as you yourself are thrown into a world of unwritten rules, backstabbing organizations and city-states that all have their own ideas as to how to save the world, past revelations that are relatively obvious, but still engaging, and oh yeah, radiation. Let's not forget about that because I'm pretty sure the show did at times. I feel like the majority of times I mentioned why a movie or a TV show worked, I mostly attribute the majority of the success to the characters in the character writing, rather than be in the form of character arcs, character growth, character revelations, or even character relations. And while yes, as you've heard pretty much throughout the entirety of this video, I still definitely believe that to be the case here. But there was an aspect of the show that I really did enjoy and found myself more immersed in than even the characters, which is a pretty incredible feat for a show or a movie to achieve for me personally, and that was the world itself, which is interesting because I would love to know how the world felt for the people that have played the games and how immersive or I guess how well the adaptation was from the game to the show. Because for me personally, the factions, the people, the circumstances, the stakes and the outcomes that could, would or should happen in a post-apocalyptic world are pretty creatively done in my opinion. And I found myself putting this one on the list of fictional worlds that I would definitely not want to live in. Overall, Fallout is a pretty solid and entertaining show that not only adds to the list of successful adaptations in the catalog for Amazon Prime, a streaming service that is slowly but surely starting to become a titan of that craft, but again delivers the blueprint and adds further evidence that with a team that actually cares about the material they're attempting to adapt and actual talent within their own craft, good shows and movies can and will more than likely always generate when those two aspects of the production go hand in hand. And the real winners of that cocktail is us the audience. So in a ranking system, or I guess you could say a grading system that is relatively new that eventually won't be new, we started this in 2024 and honestly I would say it's going pretty solid so far. I would go say go watch some of those reviews even though you're just going to see where I rank them here, but I mean, you can still go do your boy a solid. With that being said though, Fallout was an actual engaging TV show, and a show that I would recommend to all of you if I wasn't the last one to the party. Imagine. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.